Um, <clears throat> this video has pretty much summed up what I'm going to talk about, but let me ask you a question. Could you imagine a world with only one gender? I can't, because it would kill what makes our world so beautiful. Diversity. Now, men and women are fundamentally different, but by exploring these differences, we always find lots of things that we have in common. However, on a daily basis, there is so much that we do that pushes us away from considering ourselves, men and women, as equal. There is a form of sexism which is very subtle, yet hurtful, and that most of the time isn't done on purpose. An example of it is the number of expressions that we use every day while talking to the people around us. For example, the expression to man up is very common when we want to talk about someone brave solving all the problems. When we talk about a couple, we might ask who's wearing the pants in their relationship. We might forgive immature actions from a boy by saying boys will be boys, when no one would say the same when a girl behaves rudely, and I don't think that's fair. Another expression that is very common, especially among young people, is like a girl. But what does, let's say, running like a girl mean to you? Well, for most people, it means to run slowly and trip. Let me tell you, that's not how girls run. <coughs> These are called microaggressions, because we don't even realize they're sexist, like when we're told to smile because we don't look good with a sad face, or that we play football like a boy if we score a goal in PE. Now, you might be thinking that it's easy to get over it, because after all, they're just words. But at the end of the day, when you've heard these expressions around 10 times, you really feel like you would succeed in life way more if you were male. Now, we can think of these phrases as insignificant, but we need to realize that they're reinforcing hugely the idea that girls are weak and even worthless, and it pushes men and people in general to ignore aspects of their personalities that are priceless and that should be brought up more often. Can you imagine someone coming up to you and telling you that you're an object destined to please a person considered more important than you? No. Yet yeah, that's exactly the overall effect of sexist language on women. Another thing is that not only people surrounding you are using sexist language, famous people are also using it. Helen Grant, the British sports minister, said that a way to get more women involved in sports was to offer, th offer them fem feminine options, such as ballet, Zumba, or cheerleading. But imagine yourself, as a young girl, watching a female minister say that your, your place isn't on the court or on the pitch, but on the side, cheering for the male who they will play where you can't. Today, 1.9 million women fewer than men take take part in regular sports in the UK. And often, when you're a girl victim of sexism, your behavior towards others, but more importantly, towards yourself changes. As a matter of fact, it affects way more girls than we think. One day, I was walking down the street when a boy significantly older than me whistled to me. Like most girls this happens to, I just walked away and ignored him. But I wasn't traumatized or anything, and that's what's unacceptable. It becomes normal for lots of people, even for the victims themselves. And <clears throat> after all, who knows what the right reaction is? Should women act like they didn't hear it? Or should they react and risk to be even more threatened? And if you think about it, dogs and animals are whistled. But am I an animal? Are women animals? The answer is no, so they shouldn't be treated like ones. Coming back to language, the effect it has on women varies depending on the victims and the environment. In the workplace, something called the stereotype threat causes women to underperform as to not confirm stereotypes against female believed by their male colleagues. They might also feel left out and stop giving their opinion. In the streets or in public transport, a woman who faces sexist words is very likely to feel physically threatened. There are solutions to all of this but everybody needs to give a bit of their time and energy to contribute to them. Protesting is a short-term solution that's been very present over the last months. Portraying women powerful and realistic rather than sexualizing them. Encouraging young girls to take part in sports such as rugby or boxing where there are too few women at this point. And teaching girls that it's okay to say no and how self-blaming is not the solution. We've already done lots of things in order to reduce sexism, but there's still so much left to do. 
In the US, <coughs> female Uber drivers earn $1.3 per hour less than men. An estimated 15 million girls under 18 are married worldwide. On average, 30% of women who've been in a relationship report having suffered from sexual violence by their partner. And all around the world, women aged from 15 to 44 are more at risk from rape than from car accidents, cancer, and war. Sexism affects all of us, and even though I've only talked about women because they're the large majority of the sexism cases, it also affects men and boys. Let's take the example of boy dancers who are criticized every day. And because it affects all of us, we need to do something about it. If we want our future to be more equal and tolerant towards the other gender, we need to take action and respect each other. So don't be afraid of correcting someone who just said, you need to grow balls, because they might not say it next time. Let's act, because when we're silent about sexism, we're allowing it to continue. Thank you. <laughs>